I've watched a bunch of hardware wallet setup videos here on YouTube, and I've even made a few hardware setup videos myself. And quite frankly, 99% of these videos, including some of the videos that I've made here on the channel in the past, leave out the most crucial step of securely setting up one of these hardware wallets. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you that most secure method of setting up a hardware wallet using a brand new Trezor Model T. Basically the steps we're gonna follow here is we're gonna first unbox the Trezor Model T and make sure that nothing has been tampered with within the box. Then we're gonna generate our seed phrase, which is basically the universal password for every wallet and every app that you're gonna put onto the Trezor Model T. We'll install our Bitcoin wallet and fund our Bitcoin wallet using a small amount of money. And then here is the most important step that almost every other tutorial skips. We're going to completely wipe out the wallet that we just created with that small amount of money and make sure that we can restore the wallet that had that small amount of money on it using the seed phrase that we just wrote down. This is a key step for your wallet security that cannot be overlooked. You don't wanna come back to this device 10 years from now, find out that the device has broken or you lost it or something like that, and then go to restore this device on some other device using the seed phrase that you wrote down 10 years ago only to find out that that seed phrase is incorrect. After we restore the wallet, I'll show you how to make withdrawals off of the wallet, and that should complete the full life cycle of using this hardware wallet. Go down below and like this video so that YouTube shows people the proper way to set up hardware devices and let's level up your brains. All right, so first let's go ahead and unbox this and just make sure that the device has not been tampered with. Just slide this out here. And then there is the Trezor Model T. And then this is really what we're looking for right here is this holographic little sticker on the bottom. And it should say Trezor on it if you look closely at it. And then these flimsy recovery seed pieces of paper, we'll take a look at those later. So that's it really for the unboxing. The main thing that you wanna focus on here is just making sure that this little sticker thing here is intact. That's showing you that it actually came from Trezor and not some like malicious third party basically. So now that all that stuff is out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and connect this Trezor to my computer and we'll start setting up the device. And to actually connect this to your computer, you're gonna have to actually take this sticker here off. You know, mine is not coming off very easily. It was like a massive pain in the butt there to get that off, but your mileage may vary. Yours might be easier to get off. So if my treasure looks goofy for the rest of the video, that's why. All right, guys, so hopefully you can see everything here. We're gonna go ahead and plug in our treasures and head to treasure.io. Make sure you're going to treasure.io and not some random sketchy other website that's not owned by Trezor. I will have the link to treasure.io down in the description. And so you'll see the first time you plug this in, we're getting a little welcome screen here and it's telling us to go to treasure.io slash start. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we have the option of downloading the desktop app for Trezor Suite, or we can continue on Trezor Suite for web. I personally think you should download the desktop app and that's what I'm gonna be doing. I don't want to, when I'm interacting with my Trezor, have to remember some browser address just to be able to get to Trezor Suite. If you do wanna continue with Trezor Suite for web and you don't wanna download the desktop app, make sure that you're allowing the things that they're telling you to allow here and make sure that you bookmark this suite.trezor.io slash web to make sure that you're not connecting your Trezor to some like malware version basically of Trezor Suite. And that's really the danger of interacting with Trezor Suite over the web browser is that if you don't type in that URL correctly and you don't bookmark that URL, you could be interacting with a fake Trezor Suite and that could compromise your device. That's not going to happen, obviously, if you download this desktop app from Trezor's official website right here. So that's what we're gonna be doing. And here we go. It's asking me for anonymous data collection. I'm gonna say no and confirm. And here it's showing me the security check. So my hologram was intact and untampered with. Obviously mine was was at the beginning of this video, so that's good. I did buy my treasure from the official shop and my package was not tampered with. So if any of these things did apply to you, if your hologram had been tampered with or if you had bought it from someone else, definitely click this link down here on contact support. You don't wanna be setting up your funds on a device that's already been initialized or has been compromised in some other way. That doesn't apply to me though, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on set up treasure. The first thing it's asking you to do here is install the latest firmware and it's saying here, actually, if you were a super Bitcoin fan, feel free to install the Bitcoin only firmware. This is a really cool feature from Trezor. If I was personally setting this up for my own funds, I would set this up as Bitcoin only because I'm not really interested in holding any other altcoins on a hardware device. I think most people, however, are going to go with the universal version. So that's what I'm gonna download for this demo. It does say that at any point in the settings, you can switch from universal version to the Bitcoin only version. So keep that in mind and just click on whichever firmware version applies best to you. Obviously with the Bitcoin only firmware version, you're not gonna be able to store coins that are not Bitcoin. 
Bitcoin. So now that this is done, it is restarting our Trezor. And so for this first part of the tutorial, we're just going to create a brand new wallet. And then later on, I'll show you how to recover an existing wallet. So first, let's go ahead and create a new one. It's asking us for our wallet backup type. I think most people will want to go with standard seed backup here. If you really know what you're doing and you want to create a more complex setup, you can go with Shamir share backup. But I think standard seed backup with multi-sig is going to be you know, the most secure version and the easiest to use version for most people, even if you want additional security. So let's go ahead and click on standard seed backup. So now on the Trezor, we're going to confirm that we want to create a new wallet and it's a touch screen here on the Model T and now it's saying it needs a backup. So let's go ahead and create a backup. Some important things to note about backups here on the screen. You can check your backup in device settings before sending money to the wallet. The most important thing I think here though is never take a photo or make a digital copy of the backup. If you put this backup that we're going to write down on this flimsy piece of paper, if you put this online, it defeats the purpose of ever having the hardware device in the first place. And obviously make sure the backup is secured and never shared with anyone. So we'll click on all three of these to confirm that we've read them and then click on begin backup. So now we're going to create our backup. Trezor is going to generate our list of words. And so now here on the device, we have to click on, I understand, never make a digital copy of my recovery seed. So now you can get your flimsy piece of paper that was included in the box. And we're gonna go ahead and write down our 12 word seed phrase. Obviously you should never share your seed phrase with anyone or upload videos of you filling out your seed phrase to the internet. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes and I'm gonna wipe this wallet after I'm done filming today. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down all 12 of these words. I'll speed up the video so that you can watch me doing it and I'll show you the seed phrase afterwards because we're gonna need this seed phrase to restore our wallets. And after every two words, you're just gonna swipe here on the Trezor to get to the next set of words. So I'm just gonna write these down and I will meet you back here in a second. So now that we've done that, we're going to hold to confirm here on the Trezor. And now it's gonna give us a little quiz just to make sure that we've done our seed phrase correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill out this quiz based on what I've written down here for my seed phrase. So word one of 12 is decade. And so it only quizzed us on three of the words there actually. I think the quiz over on Ledger asks you every single word, which is kind of annoying, especially because Ledger has 24 words. But this is exactly why you're going to want to restore your wallet from this seed phrase that we just wrote down to make sure that you wrote down the seed phrase properly because Trezor isn't even giving you a full quiz of all of these words when you go through the setup process. So let's go ahead and click on continue. It's telling us our backup is done and we can use our backup when we need to recover the wallet. And we're gonna be doing that here later on in the video. If you want to jump ahead to that, there's timestamps down in the timeline. Click on continue. And it's going to tell us that we have not yet set a pin. So now if we jump back to the computer, we can click on continue to pin and then set pin. And then here on the device, it's asking us if we really actually want to set a pin. And yes, we do want to set a pin. I'm going to do just one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to re-enter it. And it scrambles where the numbers are every time you reload the screen. So I'm going to do it again. One, two, three, four. Obviously you should set a more secure pin than 1234. But again, this is just for demonstration purposes. So check mark on that. And now it's processing our pin. So now we've set our pin and we'll just click on continue. And then back on the computer, we'll click on continue again. So now we have the opportunity to activate different wallets because we chose the generic firmware. Note here on Ethereum that it's including ERC20 tokens. So if you're trying to store something like Chainlink or one of the other 1 million ERC20 tokens, you would click here on Ethereum. And then down here on Testnet, if you're a developer, you can even activate like Testnet Bitcoin or or testnet Ethereum or one of these other test nets. And then for some extra privacy, you can route all of your suites traffic through Tor, increasing your security. So you can go ahead and enable that there and then just click on complete setup. So the setup is complete now and you can edit the name of this Trezor. I'm going to call this Model T YouTube Demo, and we'll click on Access Suite. So now you can select your wallet type as either standard wallet or hidden wallet. I just went with standard wallet for now, but there are some really valid reasons to use a passphrase with your wallet, including if your wallet was generated with bad entropy, which I did a video about that a few weeks ago up in the cards. Basically, bad entropy can compromise your wallet. Trezor here didn't really have us inject any entropy into the seed phrase creation process. And so I think for most people, you're going to be fine to just go with a standard wallet. When you're routing Trezor, 
traffic through Tor, it's gonna be a little bit slower, but just know that you can turn it off or on any time here up in the top if you click on Tor and then enable or disable. So back to the dashboard, this is what it's going to look like when you initialize your wallet for the very first time. And then if you want to enable more coins, you can click on enable more coins here and select whatever coins you want here. I think most of the coins are going to be ERC20 tokens, but if you're trying to store something like BNB, you might have to connect your Trezor device to something like MetaMask that's going to allow you to interact with the Binance Smart Chain. And if you did ever want to switch your settings to Bitcoin only, you could come up here to the gear icon and click on settings and then come over to device and then scroll all the way to the bottom and then click on install firmware down here and get the Bitcoin only firmware. For now, let's go ahead and send some Bitcoin to our Bitcoin wallets here. So we'll click on receive Bitcoin. We'll show the full address. So here's our full Bitcoin receiving address on the Trezor and we can confirm that the address that we're seeing on the screen it ends in 0PYX, is the same as the address that we're seeing here on the device, which is also ending in 0PYX. And so we can go ahead and click on the green check mark on the device. Then we can go ahead down here and just click on copy address. We can head over to our exchange of choice, in this case Coinbase, and we'll just click on send. We're going to be sending some Bitcoin to the address that we got from our Trezor right there. Note here, maybe Trezor YouTube demo small deposit. And we're going to be testing this with just a small $10 deposit. So we can go ahead and click on continue and send now. And then once we do our two-factor authentication there, hopefully the Bitcoin should be on its way. Almost immediately here, we can actually see that the Bitcoin has been, you know, received. It might not have been totally confirmed yet, but it has been, you know, noticed by our Trezor wallet here in Trezor Suite. So if we just go ahead and click on dashboard, we can see that we have about $10 here of Bitcoin. Once we get onto the Bitcoin account screen here, we can see that we have one pending transaction receiving Bitcoin from that Coinbase transaction that we just created and it's for about $10 and 43,400 sats. At this point in the process, we've deposited a small amount of Bitcoin onto our wallets. So now we're going to do the most important step of this entire video and completely wipe this Trezor wallet and then restore the Trezor wallet from this seed phrase that we wrote down to confirm that this seed phrase is actually the wallet that we just sent the Bitcoin to. This is even more important because when we were initializing the Trezor in the first place, Trezor didn't give us a quiz on all 12 words. It only quizzed us on three of these words. So if I wrote down, you know, nine of the other words incorrectly, this Bitcoin could be lost forever when I go to restore this wallet in the future. So to wipe our wallets, let's go ahead and click up here on the gear icon and go to settings. And if you don't want to go through the process of totally factory resetting your Trezor, there is an included feature called check backup where you can click on, you know, check backup right here and it will take you to this screen. And because this is a simulated check, it's not going to wipe the pin or any of the other information on your Trezor device. So you can go ahead and click on, I understand this is a simulated check and click on start here. And so now you can follow the instructions on the Trezor. All right, so I went through and I typed in every single one of the 12 words. It didn't take that long. The autocomplete feature on the Trezor is actually really good. The only problem that I had with it was the touchscreen is pretty small. And so it's easy to like fat finger a letter combination that you didn't mean to enter. But here it is saying that our recovery seat is valid and matches the one on the device. So now I can be pretty sure that what I wrote down on that flimsy piece of paper is actually the Bitcoin wallet that I just sent Bitcoin to. So let's go ahead and click on OK. And then if you wanted to do the entire factory reset process, process, you would come down here to factory reset. You would check these boxes to understand that it's going to delete all the data on the device, including the device pin, and that you understand that you have to have this flimsy piece of paper with your recovery seat on it if you want to retain access to your funds. So let's go ahead and factory reset. And we'll just confirm that on the Trezor and we'll hold this right here. And now we'll disconnect the Trezor and go ahead and reconnect the Trezor. And we're getting these exact same setup steps that we got at the very beginning of the video. So now I'm going to recover from an old wallet and start my recovery. So do I really want to recover a wallet? Yes. And so now here on the device, we're going to go through the same process that we just went through. So select the number of words, we're going to have 12 words, and now we're going to enter our seed phrase. So same exact process here that we just did, I'm going to speed this up and meet you once I have my seed loaded back onto this Trezor. All right, 
right, so there is our last word, and it's saying success, I have recovered my wallet. So we'll click on done, and we head back to the computer. We'll see recovery completed, and we'll click on continue, and then we'll reset our pins. So we've got our pins back, and now on the computer, we can include those same tokens, or we can just include the ones that we're actually going to use and complete our setup. We'll again choose a standard wallet, and then we will follow the instructions on the screen. And so now our account has loaded again. It's the exact same wallet with the exact same 43,409 Satoshis. We can click on this wallet and see our received transaction, and we can put this transaction ID into the mempool if you know we want to track where it came from or keep track of our UTXOs or anything like that. So the final step for this video is I'm going to show you how to send funds out of this Trezor wallet and back onto something like Coinbase if, for example, you wanted to sell, let's say in this case, $5 of this $10 of Bitcoin. So let's go ahead and click on send, and we're going to need the address of our Coinbase account. So let's go back to Coinbase and click on send and receive, and we'll click on receive this time. And then we'll copy this Bitcoin address from Coinbase. Come back here to Trezor and paste in that address, and we'll say, let's send $5 of Bitcoin. And what's really great about Trezor is it's giving us a bunch of different options that we can add to this transaction, including replace by fee and even coin control, which is going to allow us to select individual UTXOs to send if we had more UTXOs actually in this wallet. And if you're not sure what a UTXO is, it's a very fundamental part of Bitcoin. Definitely leave a comment down below and I'll consider making a video on that topic to explain it to you guys in the future. So for now, let's go ahead and set the fee to high so that the transaction will go through as fast as possible. Obviously, if you were not in a time crunch, you could set your fee to low and pay less than 39 cents. Looks like low right now would be about three cents. And then down here, it's including our fee in the total. So this is going to be a $5.39 deduction from our $10 balance. Let's go ahead and review and send this transaction. And because this is a hardware wallet, we're going to need to confirm this transaction on our Trezor physical device. So it's saying, do we want to send 21,679 Satoshis to an address that starts with 3AF and ends with ZX9? If we go back to the computer, we can see that it is the ZX9 address and we are sending 21,679 Satoshis. So we'll click on check on the Trezor. This next screen that it's showing us on the Trezor is the total amount, including the fees, which does match what I'm seeing on screen here on the computer. And so all I'm going to do to send this transaction is hold to confirm on the Trezor device. And now back on the computer, it's showing us that this has been confirmed and we'll go ahead and click on send. So you'll see here the $5 and whatever cents has been deducted from our Bitcoin balance on this wallet on our Trezor. And if we reopen Coinbase, our current balance is $21.22, but we should have a balance of around $26 once this Bitcoin finally enters our Coinbase wallets. And back in Trezor Suite, we can check the progress of this transaction or bump the fee because we had replaced by fee turned on when we sent the transaction. And what bumping the fee is going to do is we're going to pay a little bit more money, but the transaction should clear into our Coinbase accounts a little bit faster. So if you had a situation where your Bitcoin wasn't sent for like hours or days, you could come back in here to Trezor, bump the fee, and hopefully your Bitcoin should get included in the next 10 minutes. And then obviously to check on the progress of this Bitcoin, we can click on sending Bitcoin here and we can copy this transaction ID into the block explorer. We don't really like Trezor Suite, so we're going to go back to mempool.space. We'll see that this transaction was first seen a minute ago, and it should arrive in about 10 minutes. And what's really cool here on mempool.space, we can see this is the fee here that we paid that's getting sent to the miner that mines this next block. This is the change or the amount left over that's going to be sitting in our wallets. So that looks like 20,026 Satoshis, which if we go back to Trezor, that's exactly what is sitting there in our wallets still. And then this is the output that's going to Coinbase. So that should be 20. 21,679 Satoshis. So it's been a while here. It's saying my transaction has two confirmations, but Coinbase is still showing my transaction as not fully confirmed yet because I think that they require six confirmations. But you can see that my deposit here from my Trezor has been received. It just is still in the pending status. It should get confirmed here in the next hour, and I'll throw up a screenshot somewhere here on screen to show you what that looks like once it is finally confirmed. And then obviously, once it's here on Coinbase, if you were trying to sell the Bitcoin, you could go ahead and just sell it through Coinbase's interface here. And that's how you're going to transfer coins off of your Trezor device onto, you know, whatever exchange it is that you're using. So for the final part of the video here, if you're actually taking the security of your device really seriously, we have been putting our seed phrase on this flimsy piece of paper this entire time. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to store significant portions of my net worth on 
flimsy pieces of paper that can just be torn up or lit on fire, or maybe they get wet and you can't read the ink anymore. It would be not good if someone could just tear up all of my money because it was stored on this stupid flimsy piece of paper. So what you should do instead if you're putting significant portions of your net worth onto hardware wallets is invest in some bulletproof sheets of titanium. My favorite bulletproof sheets of titanium are made by CryptoTag. CryptoTag scored the highest on Jamison Lop's blog that compared a bunch of different metal seed storage options. If the crypto tags are too expensive for what you're looking for, there are some good alternatives like the C plate from Cold Card. I'll have a link to all of this down in the description. At the end of the day, it's just important that you're backing up your seed phrase on something that's going to last, right? You don't want to come back to this treasure device 10 years from now and find out that like you did everything the correct way. You followed all the steps in this video. You were very secure about how you set up your treasure device, but then you come back to it in 10 years and your seed phrase is gone because the ink isn't legible anymore or whatever the reason is. It's just going to be a lot safer to put your seed phrase in something permanent like these metal sheets from CryptoTag. And then finally, the only thing safer than those metal plates is securing your crypto across multiple devices using multisig. And if you've never heard of multisig, make sure to check out this playlist over here. I love you all. See you next week.